G'day everyone, my name is Hoi. I'm going to show you how to transform this image on the left to this cool line art on the right. I'm also going to show you, if you stick around, how to bring her face back as well as how to color her shirt. So this is something that you want to follow along with. The links to the images are in the description. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is to remove the detail from this image. So if I zoom in here, you can see that there is a lot of detail here that we don't necessarily need. To do that, we're going to use the oil paint filter. And before we do that, we need to convert the layer into a smart object. So let's right click on the side of this and then go to convert to smart object. Let's rename this layer because you know me by now, we're all neat and tidy and organized. Let's type in sketch and press return on our keyboard. And let's go to filter, go to stylize, and then go to oil paint filter. So we're going with just to use these two filters here. We're not gonna use scale or bristle. If you want me to go in detail about how to use this in another tutorial, just leave me a comment. Now the setting for stylization and cleanliness depends on each of your image. For this image, I'm gonna crank up stylization all the way up to 10. And what stylization is, if I just zoom in a little bit, is how daubed or blotched the image is. So I'm just gonna exaggerate this by clicking on lighting effect here. And you can see if I just dialed this down, it's a little bit blotchy. And then if I crank it all the way up, it's become smooth, right? Now cleanliness, I've got it cranked up all the way to 10, is how long the strokes are. So I've got it cranked up to 10, so the strokes are pretty long. And then if I dial it down, it becomes very, very short, almost furry, if you like. So I'm just gonna crank it back up all the way to 10. And as I say, we're not gonna use scale and bristle. These are disabled when the lighting effect is turned off anyway. So let's press OK and let's zoom out command or control zero. So the next thing that we need to do is actually make the lines, right? Before you dread it, we're not gonna use the pen tool. So I can already hear some of your worries. Oh no, the pen tool, we're not gonna manually draw. Don't worry, we're gonna use another filter. So let's go to filter and go down to filter gallery. And let me just fit this to view. You won't see all of my menu options because it's off the screen here. And you can already see that I've got the effect that I wanted, which is the poster edges. Now you probably don't have poster edges already selected because you probably didn't do this before, right? If you don't, just go up to artistic here and then just select poster edges and this will show on the side here. If you've got other filters, make sure that you click on it and then delete the other filter. You only want poster edges here. Now the option that I've come up with is uh, a th edge thickness of seven. You can obviously dial it down if you want or dial it all the way up if that's what you're after. But seven looks good to me. And then the edge intensity is, well, how intense the edges are. I've just defined a definition with a definition. So something like five, you can play around with it to see what uh, it does. Now you can also see that here, you might not want some of these lines here. So you can play around with the edge thickness, but then, you know, you might have made this disappear, but the thickness of the edge on the other areas may not be as thick as you want. So I'm gonna show you how to mask that out later, but if you follow along by just selecting seven, that would do us well for the time being because I like the thickness of the lines elsewhere. Now posterization doesn't really matter in this case here. It just means that there's less color variation if I crank it all the way down here and if I crank it all the way up, there's more color. Again, it doesn't really matter for our image here. Let's just press OK to accept those changes. As I was saying, if you don't like the strokes in certain areas, for example here, you can mask it out. Now I'm gonna show you how to mask it out, but for my image, I'm gonna leave it in there. So let's make sure that our smart filter mask is selected. Let's press B on the keyboard to bring up our brush. And with black as our foreground color, I've got my opacity and flow up all the way up to 100. Let me just resize the brush. I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna resize it using a super duper keyboard. Not super duper, a little bit fancy keyboard shortcut, which is Control option and then I'm going to left click on my mouse to resize it um, going left and then right and then to control the hardness is up and down. If you're on a Mac 
those keyboard shortcut is alt and then right click and then left and right for your brush size and then up and down for your hardness so i'm going to choose something like this and then i can just mask this out as much as i want as i mentioned i don't want that i just was shown that for demonstration purposes so i'm going to do that command or control z i'm going to fit it to screen and the next thing i'm going to do is make this into a black and white now there's a number of ways you can do this but i'm going to use a simple method and that is using the threshold adjustment layer so let's go down to our threshold and what threshold does is literally convert things to black and white so if i go to my properties panel what this shows is anything from here all the way up to 128 will become black and anything from here to all the way to 255 will become white so if i click and drag this you can see that the black areas are reducing because the only black areas is from here to here so i'm just going to maybe look at this area because i like the texture well not texture but i like the uh, detail here so something like this i want a little bit of white on the spine or at the back of the book so something like this if you want to follow exactly the threshold level that i'm using is 42 so the next thing that i want to do is remove the white now so after all that <laughs> i want to remove the white and you'll see that a little bit later about the reason why i want to remove the white there are many ways of removing the white out of this photo you can mask it you can use color range but i like to keep things simple i'm going to use the blend if to remove the white yes you heard me right blend if is more powerful than you probably think it is but before we can use the blend if sliders what we need to do is to group both layers into a folder so let's click on the threshold layer shift and click on the sketch layer you can press command or control g and let's rename this to sketch and then I'm going to bring up my blend if option by double clicking on this. And what we're going to use is our current layer under blend if sliders. And all we need to do is to click and drag this white point. And you don't even need to click and drag it for much. You just have to click and drag a little. And just like that, the white has been removed. So let's press OK. The next thing that I want to do is have the ability to change the line color of this. Now we changed it to black and white through the threshold, but maybe I don't want black anymore. Maybe I want a different color. So to do that, I need to convert this again to a smart object and you'll see why. So it's full of suspense. Well, not really. I'm just building it up. So let's right click on this sketch folder here and then go down to convert to smart object. Let's create a solid color. And then let's choose a color. It doesn't really matter what color it is for the time being. Let's click OK and then let's clip it by pressing Option or Alt on your keyboard and then just hover your mouse between these lines and then press on that. And then you can see the color black has turned into this color that we've chosen. So let me change the temporary color to something like a dark blue, something like this let's press OK so now we've got another issue which is that the background is transparent so we want to put a texture at the back of that and that's easily done but before we do that we're going to be neat and tidy so let's click on the first layer and then let's press shift and then click on the second layer command and control G and then again let's type in sketch because that's what it is and now let's bring in our texture by going to file and then place embedded and the paper texture is named paper. So let's rotate this. I've got my uh, fingers held onto shift so I can rotate it into in 15 degree increments. And then shift and option, that shift and alt to resize it proportionally and from the center. And then clicking and dragging out to fill out the canvas. And then accept that by pressing return. Let's move this down to the bottom so we can see what we're doing. So this background texture is a little bit too bright. So let me just darken it. And the easiest way is just to duplicate this layer, Command and Control J. And then all I'm going to do is change the blend mode from normal to multiply. I'm just going to reduce down the fill maybe to about 80%. Now let's put these layers into a group. So click and then shift click this, Command and Control G. Let's rename this to background. 
The next thing that I'm going to do, as you saw on this image, is that I need to bring her back her face and add some texture to her face. So what we need to do is get a copy of the image. Let's open our sketch folder. Let's double click on this smart object and let's go into the folder. And this is the image that we're after. I'm going to click on this layer and press Command or Control C to copy it. And then I'm just going to close this smart object. I'm not going to save this and I'm going to click on the top group and then press Command or Control V to paste it. Now, before we do anything, let's rename this to face. And what we need to do now is just to mask out her face and neck. So to do that, let's grab our object selection tool here. And then with our mode, let's make sure that it's on lasso. And I'm just going to click and drag, do a rough selection. Let's press on this mask icon here and let's just zoom in here. And the mask is pretty good. But the one thing that I don't want is for the image to go all the way up to the line here. So I want to offset it a little bit, just shrink the mask a little bit. So let's make sure that our mask here is selected and we're going to go to a filter. So let's go to filter and go to other and we're going to use the minimum filter. So what the minimum filter does is reduce the mask by this radius here. So I've already played around with it and determined that 20 looks good to me. And I've also got a preserved roundness, this extra precision in that it gives me this decimal place. If I turn into squareness, it doesn't give me that precision. So roundness is good for me. And then I'm going to leave it at 20, press OK. And you can see that it's just offset a little bit. So let's just zoom out a little bit. So the next thing that I'm going to do is add some texture on her face. So let's go to File and then go to Place Embedded. And we're going to use this last image called Abstract. And let's press Place. And I'm going to rotate this around. Again, I'm going to press Shift and then just rotate it so it snaps into 15 degree increments. And then I'm going to resize it from the center and proportionally shift and option to shift and alt while I'm dragging. Now I'm dragging it all the way out to the edges of the canvas. I don't really need to do that. All I needed to do was to cover the mask here. But just for safety, I'm covering the whole canvas here. Let's accept that. And then let's clip this to the layer mask here. And obviously this is one step in the right direction, but we also need to change the blend mode. So let's change it so we can see a little bit of her face from normal to, I think I use color dodge. What I want to do now is to inject some color to this. So let's use a solid color from our adjustment layer. And let's choose something a little bit of purple. What do you think? So something like this, I'm going to press OK. I'm going to clip it to the layer below again. And then let's change our blend mode to say multiply. And that's a little bit too dark. I could change the color to a lighter color by double clicking on the solid color. So maybe something like this and then press OK. Or I could have also reduced the fill as well. So maybe I'll do both. Now, if you wanted to do the same thing for the shirt, you could do that. All you need to do is mask the shirt out and then just add these layer effects again. So let me do that very quickly. But before we do that, I'm going to place this into a folder. So click on this, shift and click on this and press Command or Control G. Let's rename this to face, press return and let's duplicate this. So Command or Control J. And obviously this is not face, so this is going to be her shirt. And let's open this and let's just change the mask here. Actually, I'm not going to change it. I'm going to make a new mask. So I'm going to click and drag it to the trash can. And don't be alarmed. It's changed. I know um, what we're going to do is double click on this just to make sure that we've renamed this again. So this is the shirt. And we're going to use our object selection tool here. Make sure that our mode is on lasso. And I'm going to select her shirt here. And that looks good to me. You can obviously finesse your mask. But once we're happy with the mask, let's create a mask by clicking on this icon here. And there you have it. We can also offset this by going to filter and then go to other minimum. 
and maybe we do a little bit more to offset it by say 50 or maybe 49.9 just for fun of it <laughs> press ok and then because i don't want everything to be purple let's change the color of this to double click on that to say this greenish color here so maybe this dark green here and press ok i'm going to collapse this collapse this and you can see that these lines, if I just change my cursor into a move tool, so you don't see this pink overlay, these lines uh, look okay. But if you want it a little bit thicker, all you have to do is just go to your sketch folder and then click on this and then just command or control to duplicate this a number of times to your liking. And that's how you can create this cool line art in a matter of minutes. No pen tool, no manually brushing. Isn't that fantastic? Now, if you enjoyed this video or learned something new, let me know about it by commenting in the comment section, liking this video, subscribing or hitting the bell icon so you can get notified for when my next video is out.